in life, people that do a job, they have a tool. For a soldier, they have their weapon, a musician has their instrument. But for me, I have a bike. It is a well-crafted weapon that I'm going to use to try and defeat my self-doubt and to conquer it. The thing is, I can't ride it anymore. school uh, I played football um, I was a tiny guy uh, the coaches were surprised as well as my parents when I would actually make a tackle but I tried my best and when I when I start something I'm gonna give it my all I'm not gonna quit through football to my ACL and meniscus shattered it um, went through six months of rehab once I hurt my knee um, I wasn't doing a whole lot, and in this life that we're living, we we have a lot of motion and everything's changing. And I had I had to be pretty still, and being being still broke me um, mentally and emotionally. Because um, for me, if I'm not moving, I'm dying. Um, I had an older buddy and he was big into cycling, and he helped me find my first bike on Craigslist. I just got plugged into local racing. A bike shop called Celestial Cycles uh, helped me get the proper gearing, because juniors have to have it a certain way, and they were the only bike shop that would help me. That's why I race with the Celestial across my chest. Being on the bike, it's a gift. I'm like reminded of what I'm thankful for and all the gifts God's given me. You know, beautiful world around me, healthy body, good bike. If I didn't have that, I start to like forget how he's like moved in my life. When my friends first told me about the Land Run 100, um, I looked it up, I checked it out online. Um, roughly 100 miles, usually more. So I signed up, just kind of second nature, and then I started thinking to myself, um, did I make the right choice? Because, you know, the personal doubts come in, can I do it? And then I have lingering injuries and, you know, is my knee strong enough? In years past, um, when it rains or it's been moist, the mud is intense. And one year, around a thousand people signed up and roughly 180 people finished. So we're talking very small percentage. So here's the thing about Caleb. Caleb takes me on adventures that I don't necessarily want to go on. It uh, was a hard time when he hurt his meniscus and his ACL. It was a dark, we call it the dark time of Caleb. It was hard, it was depressing. He had to really uh, work to get back. Personally, I've, I've been feeling really confident. I'm like, let's do this, man. Let's let's shred the nard. Um, I'm starting to get those questions uh, starting to pop up like, you know, this is going to be a challenge. This is going to push me to the, the very edge of my ability. I, I like him racing. I like him going out and, and, and doing battle. Uh, after he got hurt, you, you have a little bit of thought about that, and when he talks about going and doing the race, I'm, I'm excited, let's go. And then there's some point whenever you're going up there and you see him getting ready or you see him fall down or something, and, and it, it's it's deep inside of where you're like, oh, his knee and all of the stuff that, that he went through. You know, I thought about, you know, should I should I back out? Um, but the, the internal voice, you know, I guess that the Lord has placed in me is like, no, Caleb, you, you know, you're you're a mighty man of valor. That's what my dad's told me since I was a child. And I'm like, 
no, I'm not, I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to get up and I'm going to face this because, you know, that's a picture for life. You know, when I grow up and I have a family, you know, there's going to be a lot of situations that are like, you know, rise up, Caleb. Well, the, the story is that uh, there's, there's a man of Israel and he is hiding underground, throwing his wheat, getting rid of the chaff, and that basically he's hiding because of the Israel is being occupied and the angel of the Lord comes and says mighty man of valor so it's not about where he was hiding underground but it's about what he's going to become and he is a mighty man of valor not only for what he's doing today but for what he's he's going to do and so then once you are where your knee works and you can do well you would think you would protect it but not Caleb he thought it would be a great idea to sign up for a hundred and something mile, you know, on his bike. I want him to be able to do what God calls him to. I love his fearless adventure heart. I hate as his mom when he does things that puts himself in harm's way. Um, it's scary. I don't like it. I don't like it. Win or lose, Caleb, you stand up and you go into battle because that, that, that's what we're made to do, and, and that's what's right. So the question becomes, can I beat this brokenness? So with the weeks leading up to this, this big race, the Land Run 100, um, we've been doing uh, a plan. So I've had some pretty serious injuries in the past, um, some trauma. Um, and I need to race cleaner to be faster. During the week, we have two days of VO2 max, so we're trying to stress ourselves a lot and create a big base to build on. Um, and then once a week, ride for an hour and just try and get that spin going, try and get the legs, you know, feeling decent with increasing the, the pain and the power. Um, and then during the weekends, we go outside with the local pros. Daniel is a fellow racer, but for me, he's kind of like a, a bit of a mentor. He offers his wisdom on racing and the scenarios. A lot of times in training, he is you know, way faster and stronger than me. He, he sticks around, and he's, he's pulling me up and he's building me up. He would, he would give me his own bike uh, to help me finish if, if he had to. A lot of times I'm, I'm like, where would I be without Daniel? Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to finish a lot of races. If I were to be able to succeed at this race, that would be a huge stepping stone for me. The self-doubt, you know, it's always going to be there, probably, probably going to be lingering um, just in different aspects of my life. But um, race-wise, if I could do really well, that would, that would show me there's a purpose in racing, there's a purpose in cycling for me. Ciao, ciao. In the studio, getting a little afternoon work in. What's this? No hole in my crotch. Your boy bought some new racing bibs. They came at a ridiculous price, so. I'm not eating anymore, you know, because I don't have money to eat, but I got some fresh racing pants. Caleb Korf, coming to you live from his bed. This is where I come to recover. Went for a training ride, also known as the Boxcar Derby. Had some heavy hitters, some big boy racers, some pros. I was feeling pretty good. I was like, big boy on campus, you know. Then I completely fell apart. Legs were gone, destroyed. I'm just not sure if it's going to be enough to make it through the land run. So we are traversing unknown territory in the heart of Oklahoma City. Here's the day that the Lord had for us. Get some coffee. Get all nice and warm. Peace out, brother. Today was the opening race of the Oklahoma 
road cycling season. And there are some people that crashed before the race even began. Your boy, me, Caleb Korth, hanging with the big boys. Two people get off the front, you know, trying to be heroes, trying to be legends. Um, and they kind of were because I think they, they made it to the finish before everyone else did. Overlapped wheels and crashed. I always crash. When do I not crash? I, you know, you tell me. Got some battle scars. Got a little, uh, little strawberry maple syrup coming out of the tree. Let's check out my knee. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, some yumminess. Yeah, dripping down the leg. You know what, you know what that is? That's hard work. That's effort. A little frustrated, because I was feeling strong. You know, I was like, this is my race, this is my time. And the Lord was like, not today. I was like, yes sir. Peace and love, brothers and sisters. I, I didn't forget you. Peace and love, sisters. Here we are, men's bathroom. Getting smooth for the week. My boy behind the camera. Sad. So, tell me Caleb, does it really make that big of a difference? You know, probably not. <laughs> but, um, if you like crash, it helps your scabs not get all filled with hair. True. It's the bike racing Equinox Eve. Tomorrow's the big day, the big race. Here we have the setup. We have the sky blue merino wool jersey for if it's cold, treacherous. We have the dry fit long sleeve jersey for if it's cool but comfortable. So, I'm just getting ready. We'll keep you updated on tomorrow's uh, turnout. What happens? Peace. Let me talk you through the land run experience. So leading up to it, we uh, we had some nerves, we had some doubts. Uh, we're talking 104 miles of gravel. Um, I've gone pretty far, kind of in the 80s before on road. You know, will my body hold up? And we begin. I am feeling so alive, so happy, so free on this this bike with a thousand of my closest new friends. All is relatively good until we get halfway and then we're on the downhill um, like side of the race, last 50-ish last miles. That is when I start crashing. I crashed three times, mostly because of my lack of bike handling skills. The one that you know almost undid me was the third crash. Something weird happens with the wheel and I like just slam on my left side and you know, skid for a little bit, just trying to think, you know, do I continue this, this jaunt? With 18 miles left, my music died and I was in a silent world of me and my breath. We're over 100 miles and we make the turn, I see the finish line.
personally, the land run was a bit of a disappointment for me. It was awesome to finish and ride that far, but I didn't really achieve any of the goals I set for myself. It was wide open and a lot of the race I wasn't by anybody and somehow still found a way to crash three times. Stressing about riding clean is obviously not working for me. I need to make some serious mindset changes if I want to be a better racer that actually competes for things. that worrying about riding clean is no longer an option for me. I'm just gonna full send it and go for it, see what happens. So the land run was an endurance test to see if I could make it the distance and the racing we'll be going into next is crit racing. The Wheeler Crit is my hometown crit race. We race around an old airport track. You are talking uh, over 30 you know, racers on any given race, inches away, going over 20 miles an hour. Chances of crashes go up way, way higher. Can I return to my community and you know, reclaim that, that local glory and show up for my friends and my family? So the crit was going really well, and I was chilling in third and fourth place and came in with two laps to go. A racer behind me rubbed my back wheel and bent my axle. That quickly threw me into last place. Um, and I was able to finish the race, but with this new mindset, um, you know, it's disappointing that you lose, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I can't control. A lot of, you know, what happens to me when I'm out there racing. Um, but mentally letting go of that has enabled me to race better and freer. I've learned that imperfections are a part of life. They're going to happen. Trying to avoid them and Worrying about them doesn't doesn't help anything. We all slip up. We all have crashes and different forms in our lives. After you're down, you basically have two choices. You can stay there, wallow in your pity, or you can get up and get back in the saddle. <laughs>